Good evening. Welcome to California Today. I'm David Zhang. Here is a preview of some of today's top stories. Meta is threatening to pull news contents from its platforms. This comes in response to a proposed California law that would make tech companies pay media outlets. A state bill wants to decriminalize psychedelic drugs. It's moving fast through legislature after skipping a few committee hearings. San Francisco's previous DA is set to start a new job at UC Berkeley's law school. This comes after San Franciscans ousted him in a recall last year. Facebook parent company Meta is threatening to pull news feeds on its platforms for California residents. This is because the state wants it to buy all the news articles that appear on the platform. The Journalism Preservation Act will require big tech companies to pay news outlets a journalism usage fee. The proposed law is aimed at reversing a decline in California's local news sector. The Meta Policy Communications Director responded via Twitter. He said they would remove news from Facebook and Instagram, quote, rather than paying to a slush fund that primarily benefits big out-of-state media companies under the guise of aiding California publishers. State Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks tweeted that Meta's threat is a scare tactic that they have tried to deploy unsuccessfully in every country that has attempted this. The social media giant has been waging a fight over similar compensation for news publishers at the federal level in Congress and in other countries. A bill to decriminalize psychedelic mushrooms has made progress in the California Senate. The bill skipped a couple of committee hearings and now is closer to becoming law. Here's more. The California Senate recently passed Senator Scott Weiner's Senate Bill 58 to decriminalize hallucinogenic mushrooms, despite their controversial status. I don't object to legalizing drugs in general. I think that there can be lots of societal protections to help people who might get in trouble with drugs. Oddly enough, I probably a good thing, although I would prefer to see more research, scientific research done on that, to be safe. I don't like that. I don't like hallucinogens being legalized because of the potential, the, you know, the people who are under effect, they're not really, they can't be held responsible for what their actions are and everything. So I, I don't, I don't like that. Okay. I don't, I don't agree with this legislation of legalizing magic mushrooms. Um, I think that uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms may have therapeutic benefits. Uh, I personally think that those, uh, you know, any pharmaceutical use should be regulated. SB 58 is now halfway through the legislative process after Wiener invoked a bypass rule at the end of last month to skip hearings in the Appropriations Committee. He said that criminalizing drug use and possession does nothing but fill up prisons. Wiener said in a May 24th statement, quote, We shouldn't be criminalizing people for personal use for these non-addictive substances. If passed, Senate Bill 58 will allow the cultivation, transfer, and transportation of plant-based precursors for these drugs. The substance causing the psychedelic effect psilocybin is found in many mushrooms and can be produced synthetically. But several law enforcement associations, local governments, and organizations oppose legalizing psilocybin. The California District Attorneys Association said, We are sympathetic to proponents who argue that the veteran population might benefit therapeutically from exploration of these substances. However, these drugs are Schedule I controlled substances for a reason. They have no federally accepted medical use and have a high probability of misuse. Although ongoing research is looking into psilocybin's ability for treating depression, anxiety, and PTSD, the American Psychiatric Association determined that the drugs are not ready for use as a treatment. Border officials in California find over $38 million of meth hidden in kale, of all things. Border Patrol detained the semi-truck driver over the fine. The drugs weighed almost 6,000 pounds and were in over 250 packages within the vegetable shipment. A photo from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection shows a cardboard box with drug packages sitting in the middle of kale leaves. Officials made the discovery at the Otay Mesa cargo facility. 
Another photo shows big bins full of bags and containers of the drugs. In Texas, border officials found almost $2 million worth of cocaine on a commercial bus at Hidalgo International Bridge. 50 packages were discovered that weighed over 130 pounds altogether. Homeland Security is investigating. San Francisco's mayor just announced a multi-billion dollar budget for the upcoming year. San Francisco is the state's second largest spender, with Los Angeles being the first. NTD's David Lamb has more. San Francisco Mayor London Breed announced a $14.6 billion budget aimed at improving the city, an increase from $10 billion when Breed became mayor in 2018. And I truly believe that the work that we have done together throughout this budget process will leave us in a better place, will make us stronger, but more important, it will provide the change we need to move San Francisco in a completely different direction. The mayor's budget includes funding the street response teams as well as 220 new officers over the next two years, with the goal of reaching 1,800 sworn officers by 2024. And what I say to those who may want to criticize law enforcement and the police department in San Francisco, don't talk about it, be about it. Join the San Francisco Police Department. Be the change you want to see. Be that community police officer that everyone is asking for. The budget also includes expanding of public safety ambassadors and street cleaning crews. And to combat open air drug markets, the city expanded prosecutors dedicated to targeting drug traffickers. The city will also support safe parks by adding eight new park rangers focused on public spaces. The budget funds nearly 600 net new shelter beds for the homeless. Everyone's trying to say retail is going away because of safety, but they're also going away because of the financial uncertainty and the layers of taxes that are also contributing to destroying the retail industry. And also to restore the economy, Breed is proposing tax incentives for new businesses and delaying scheduled tax increases for some services until 2025. So let's transform San Francisco and let's make magic happen. Thank the mayor's budget of $14.6 billion is also for the next year of 2024 to 2025 fiscal year. The city has a population of nearly 800,000 people. In comparison, San Jose, which has a population of nearly 1 million, had a total budget of 6 billion for 2022 to 2023. David Lamb, Entity News, California. Ousted the San Francisco District Attorney, Chelsea Boulding has a new position. He's now the founding executive director of a new criminal law and justice center at the University of California, Berkeley Law School. Bodin was removed from his district attorney position in a recall vote in 2022. He announced his new position in an op-ed. He also announced he would not seek elected office in 2024. He said that the new role is consistent with his lifelong commitment to fixing the criminal legal system, ending mass incarceration, and coming up with new solutions for public safety. Opponents say Boudin's policies as district attorney are part of the reason San Francisco saw a surge in violent crime. We'll take a short break now, but here's a look at what we have for you when we come back. The LA Dodgers plan to relaunch their Christian faith and family day event. This comes after weeks of back and forth over whether to invite a trans group to their annual Pride Night. An animal shelter in California is full of four-legged friends. Not a bad problem, but they're now calling on people to help adopt their pets. And an iconic coastal route was recently named as a top road trip destination. We'll take a look, but you can probably guess which road this is. Those stories and more coming up on California Today.
Welcome back to California Today. I'm your host, David Zhang. A legendary Southern California baseball team is hitting a home run by hosting a very meaningful event for family, friends, and fans to enjoy the summer. NTD's Christina Corona tells us more from the nearby Vinscoli Avenue. The Los Angeles Dodgers are stepping up to the plate and combining the passions of baseball, faith, and family. The organization decided to relaunch their Christian Faith and Family Day event for July 30th right here at Dodger Stadium. The announcement was made just two weeks after the Dodgers removed the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, who identify themselves as a leading-edge order of queer and trans nuns from their Pride Night game scheduled for June 16th. After receiving massive backlash, the Dodgers then re-invited the group back to the stadium for their 10th annual LGBTQ Plus Pride Night and issued an apology as well. Dodgers star pitcher Clayton Kershaw disagreed with the decision to honor the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence and asked his organization to move forward the date for their Christian Faith and Family Day. In a recent tweet, Kershaw said, quote, Excited to announce the relaunch of Christian Faith and Family Day at Dodger Stadium on July 30th. More details to come, but we are grateful for the opportunity to talk about Jesus and determined to make it bigger and better than it was before COVID. Hope to see you on July 30th. Other MLB players have also disagreed with the Dodgers' decision to honor the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Washington Nationals pitcher Trevor Williams also had some disagreements with the Dodgers' decision to invite the group back. He tweeted, quote, to invite and honor a group that makes a blatant and deeply offensive mockery of my religion and the religion of over 4 million people in Los Angeles County alone undermines the values of respect and inclusivity that should be upheld by any organization. For now, the Los Angeles Dodgers are in first place in the NL West, and this upcoming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Dodgers will take on the New York Yankees right here at Dodger Stadium. Christina Corona, NTD News, Los Angeles. People driving vehicles in some of the freeways in Los Angeles may soon be required to pay extra charges. This is according to a policy set to focus on resolving existing traffic congestion. A new policy may soon require some drivers on LA freeways to pay a toll. By summer, the LA County Metropolitan Transportation Authority is expected to release a blueprint for its congestion pricing plan. According to a report by the Los Angeles Times, people will need to pay to drive in city centers. Congestion pricing will be implemented in certain high-frequency routes on freeways. Drivers who do not pay the toll could be forced off the roads. The transportation agency says the idea is to promote cleaner air and bring in more funds for the agency. However, the agency stressed that, quote, it's really about making it easier for those who drive to get to where they need to go faster, more reliably. They insist that congestion tolls will not be a revenue-first approach. It's currently unclear how the agency plans to implement these tolls for people who have been driving on roads for free. A program connecting low-income families and households nationwide to affordable internet services is now accepting applications in Orange and San Diego counties. Orange and San Diego counties are now providing affordable internet services for low-income families. Their new program called the Affordability Connectivity is now accepting applications. It aims to give consumers discounted access to broadband services regardless of credit status or prior debts. Eligible households must have an income at or below 200% of federal poverty guidelines or participate in assistance programs. Participating providers include AT&T, Cox, Verizon, CenturyLink, Frontier, Infinity Mobile, Cricket Wireless, and Boost Mobile. They will receive the federal funds directly to apply the monthly discount. According to the Federal Communications Commission, there were more than 17 million households across the country who had to sign up for the program as of last week. Phone scammers pretended to be Irvine police officers trying to take advantage of victims. So police are reminding people that they will never ask for personal banking information, credit card numbers, or other payment types over the phone. The Irvine Police Department reported that scammers recently pretended to be police officers to ask for personal information and large sums of money over the phone. Irvine Police told Epic Times, quote, 
It just seems to be an ongoing issue with people spoofing entities and agencies. Officers say no one has fallen for the trap in recent cases, but warns that scammers will try any means possible to take advantage of victims. Police are reminding the public that if you receive a suspicious call from Irvine Police, ask for the officer's name, badge number, or the case number before hanging up and calling law enforcement for verification. And in Northern California, an animal shelter says it's at maximum capacity, with the hundreds of animals waiting to find their forever homes. The shelter is now asking the community for help. NTD's David Lamb has the story. Thursday began like any other for Sherry, but it quickly turned into a busy morning. I found two Frenchie bulldogs uh, wandering the streets without collars and didn't know where else to bring them, so I brought them here to see if they're microchipped or owners are looking for them. These two dogs are about to join hundreds of other animals at the San Jose Animal Care and Services. But the bad news is the shelter is full. I think the biggest challenge that we have right now is um, you know, uh, not, not many people are adopting and there's not a lot of opportunities for our shelter to uh, send animals to other organizations because many organizations out there are full as well. Toronto says they're seeing a mixture of strays and owners surrendering. The shelter is now asking for help from the Bay Area community to adopt, foster, or even simply volunteer. I was just talking to uh, a new owner, and so, you know, it's definitely a great sight to see because every animal, you know, needs a home, needs a loving home. And if you're able to help uh, but through adoption, through fostering, through volunteering, or, you know, you could even just donate. As of Thursday, the animal shelter has just under 900 animals, which include kittens and cats, puppies and dogs, and a number of bunnies, hamsters, birds, and guinea pigs. During April and May, the shelter received an average of 300 animals a week and is now only accepting sick, injured, or aggressive animals due to limited space. But a few lucky four-legged friends hopefully found their forever homes today. I just really like the temperament and he's not aggressive and not a barker, so, so happy, so happy. He's adorable. I heard you guys were full and was thinking about getting a dog, so I you know, came to the shelter to you know, pick one, found one, so taking him home, new, new member of the family. To encourage adoptions, the shelter is waiving adoption fees for dogs six months or older through June. The shelter is open seven days a week, and anyone interested can visit their website by searching San Jose ACS Pet Compass online. David Lamb, Entity News, California. As the weekend approaches, let's take a look at California's iconic Pacific Coast Highway, or Route 1. It was recently listed as a top road trip destination due to the beautiful scenery visible from the highway. Route 1 in California recently received a prestigious award by MarketWatch. It has been named the top road trip destination. The highway connects San Francisco to Santa Barbara and passes through Monterey and Big Sur, and is the second longest state highway in the U.S. The highway goes through the Avenue of the Giants on its northern end in Humboldt County. This area features redwood trees that are hundreds of years old. And on the southern end, Market Watch suggests stopping by Stearns Wharf in Santa Barbara. Other road trip destinations mentioned by Market Watch include Lake Tahoe, Key West in Florida, and Quebec City in Canada. Now let's check in with NTD's Carlos Reyes for today's sports roundup. This is your California Sports Roundup, and I'm Carlos Reyes. First up, the San Jose Earthquakes defeated Seattle Sounders FC 1-0 on Wednesday night at Lumen Field in Seattle, Washington. The Quakes earned their first road win of the season, while forward Jeremy Abobise scored his sixth goal of the season to reach 50 goals in his MLS career. Earthquakes forward Jeremy Abobise had this to share about the win. Yeah, it was a good feeling to see all the work we put in on the training ground and set pieces come to fruition. I think we've come close a few times. Got a free kick goal last game, today a corner kick goal. Uh, and, and we've had some good looks as well, so 
Uh, today we got a good clean header and guys ended up in their spots and I was able to convert. So something to build off of and on the road it's going to be difficult. After a scoreless first half that saw 11 total shots, the Earthquakes found the game-winning goal in the 48th minute through Jeremy Bobise. Rodriguez headed a ball off a quarter kick taken by Cristian Espinosa, redirecting it towards Ebubise for the tap-in. Goalkeeper Daniel made a total of eight saves, earning his first shutout of the season. The Earthquakes will continue on the road to face the Colorado Rapids on Saturday, June 3rd. The new National Women's Soccer League team in the San Francisco Bay Area will be called Bay Football Club, or Bay FC for short. The team's name, logo, and colors, navy, poppy, red, and fog gray, were unveiled Thursday. Bay FC is set to join the NWSL as the league's 14th team in 2024. The team expects to announce where it will train temporarily in the coming months, with plans to build a permanent practice facility in the future. Ali Wagner is a founding partner of the team along with fellow former U.S. team players Brandy Chastain, Danielle Slayton, and Leslie Osborne. Bay FC's logo incorporates a stylized description of a bridge with the letter B. San Francisco-based investment firm Sixth Street is Bay FC's majority backer with an investment of $125 million. The firm has also invested in soccer clubs like Real Madrid and Barcelona, as well as the NBA's San Antonio Spurs. Sixth Street CEO Alan Waxman will serve on the NWSL's Board of Governors. Others on the franchise's board include Cheryl Sandberg, a former Facebook executive, Rick Welts, former Golden State Warriors president, and Stacey Slaughter, former vice president for communications for the San Francisco Giants. The NWSL is in the midst of its 11th season with 12 teams. Angel City and Los Angeles and the San Diego Wave joined the league last year. Last month, the league announced the return of the Utah Royals, who will also start to play in 2024 along with Bay FC. The league is expected to add a 15th team in the Boston area in the future. Shohei Otani blasted a pair of two home runs and Mike Trout and Taylor Ward hit one each to lift Los Angeles over host Chicago. Chad Wallach's solo shot in the ninth punctuated the team's five homer afternoon, while Angel starter Jaime Barria scattered one run and four hits with three walks and six strikeouts in five innings. Andrew Vaughn and Yasmani Grandal both had a pair of hits for the White Sox, who added a run on Cliff Frazier's pinch hit RBI single in the seventh. Jake Berger hit a solo home run in the ninth, and Hanser Alberto closed the scoring with a two run double. Angels 12, White Sox 5. That is it for today's sports roundup. Thank you for watching. I'm Carlos Reyes. Thanks, Carlos, and that's all we've got for you tonight. We would like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcasts at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there, ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Ganji World, or through our email, california.today.com at ntd.com. I'm David Zhang. Have a wonderful evening.